Hey there, this is Noah from Skillet AI. And in this lesson, I want to show all of you beginners out there how to really get started with importing and exporting N8N files. In particular, we're going to do some project files from the Skillet AI website. And then I also want to show you what it looks like to go from completing your N8N project to actually setting it live and then making sure it's running as you expect. All right, so assume for a second that you've logged into Skillet AI. Anyone can log in. The account is free. We use Google Connect. You just have to reveal who you are to us. You know, you're basically sharing your email and it doesn't cost anything to join. So if you look at any one of our projects, what you'll see is that once you've logged in, you can not just access the videos that walk you through the step-by-step -step instructions, but you can actually download the N8N workflow file. So here I am in this project we launched about two weeks ago. This is the Facebook ad reporting project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this N8N workflow file. So now what? What do I do with that file? So if I log into my N8N account and I open up a new workflow, rather than building out this from scratch and you know adding individual nodes, I can go up here to these three dots and I can say import from file. And when I choose import from file, I'm just going to pick the file that I just downloaded and it imports, right? So what is it importing? It's importing every single node in the right order with all the settings that were saved. Well, in, in the case where I'm loading it on my own computer, I just downloaded it from my own account and now um, I have basically imported it into my own account. So when I loaded it, it loaded up perfectly. If you did this on your side, you might see that some of these individual nodes nodes need to be updated. So any node that requires a credential, some sort of login or authentication handshake or API key, you're going to have to reestablish that connection. For example, this Facebook node, it needs to connect to a specific Facebook account. And this is connected to my account. So when you go and load this, you're going to have to reestablish this connection, right? The same is true with Google Sheets. You're going to have to build the Google Sheets account connection credential within N8N. Uh, or if you've already built it, you could simply update because it might show yours as another option. OpenAI, you have to add your OpenAI API key. And then even with Gmail, you would have to build the credential for Gmail. So N8N really simplifies those authentication handshakes. If you were to do that as a developer, it could take you hours to set up. You should be able to set it up within N8N within minutes. And once you set it up in one workflow, it's now saved to your N8N account. And you might go and try to use OpenAI in another account, and another project, and you'll see your connection saved. All right. So that's how you can import a file in particular. You can import a file from our website. And then if you wanted to share a file with somebody else, you make changes, you do your thing, you save it. And then also from these three dots, you could say download. What does that do? It downloads the same file. So when you download or import or export these files, I'm just going to show you what that file actually looks like. Let's see if this opens up. Okay. So this is the actual file. It's not that readable. This is JSON. JavaScript object notation. This is basically the code behind the scenes of what N8N is actually doing. And it's just a whole bunch of structured data. And each one of the nodes has a node block and each one of the settings is saved as a parameter. And this is a pretty long amount of text. So it's not that useful to like try to read this yourself, but it is super valuable that you have that ability to export and import. And I'll just say one thing about security. If you were to hard code in any of the values yourself, so for example, if I hard coded in my ad account ID, before I downloaded it, I zeroed out my ad account ID because when I share that file, that ad account ID, let's see if I can find it, is going to be somewhere in this file, raw, right? So here it is, ad account ID, the value is this. So for some reason, I had hard coded some kind of sensitive data, like my email or other personally identifiable data. You want to clear out that data before you share that file with somebody else. And then in, on the receiving end, this isn't going to run until someone comes in and updates this with an actual ad account and puts their own email in. So just a, a couple of ways to be aware of the risk you have when you're either importing or exporting files. All right, but that's how you do it using these three dots. The second thing that I wanted to talk about beyond import export is the idea of turning the automation on, making it live. All right, so this particular automation, all of these automations have a trigger. The trigger is basically the first domino that falls that starts off the sequence, the chain reaction of all the steps in your workflow. And this is set to be triggered every day at midnight. You might open up another uh, automation that's triggered some other one, right? So let's look at another one of the automations that we've done. Let's see, let's do the meeting scheduler, right? So this is triggered when a Gmail message is received. So this is sort of ad hoc. The first one was on a schedule. There's all different sorts of triggers. This isn't going to run. The other once a day isn't going to run until I set this automation to active. 
If it's set to inactive, we're working on it, we're editing, we're testing, we're using dummy data, we're essentially making sure and validating that things are set up correctly, but it is not going to auto trigger until you set it to active. It's as simple as toggling the switch. This is now active. I'm gonna shut this one off, but that's as simple as it is. And when you're in your list or in your project, you can basically see which are active, which are inactive. As far as I know, on the lowest cost N8N cloud account, which is what this is, I think it's 20 or $25 a month, something in that range, you can only have three active workflows at a time. You can have any number of workflows inactive, but you can only activate a certain number. So that's another thing to be aware of. But let me switch over. This is this is my account that I use for Skillet AI. These are all kind of instructional. I'm gonna switch over. This is another account that I have. This is an active workflow, right? So this is a very complex n and workflow where I'm scanning uh, about 10 different RSS feeds for news stories. I'm running a whole bunch of logic. I'm putting it in a spreadsheet and then I'm sending a Slack message to myself. Basically, this notifies me of what's happening in the world. And I like to write about real-time events on my LinkedIn channel. And this basically alerts me every morning. Hey, here's 10 articles you might be interested in. I think it's since 12. This is a great example. When I have active turned on and I'm running this automation, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it errors out, it fails. So this particular automation is set to run every day at 6 a.m. This morning at 6 a.m., I didn't get the Slack message. It didn't work. So what I wanted to show you is not only can you choose to activate or deactivate an automation, but if you click from editor, right? We've always been in the editor view where we're changing settings and building our workflow and testing it. If you go to the executions tab, it's going to show you the stack every time this is run over the last week. So you can see this runs once a day. On August 8th, it succeeded. Then there was an error on August 9th, then an error, then it worked, then it worked, and then an error. So about half the time, this is erroring out. So this is a great example where I came up with something really complicated. I probably outsmarted myself because it's not working consistently. So when you go to the executions, you can basically load a snapshot of each of these instances. And what you can see is where it's failing. So in both of these cases, you can see that this one node, this Google Sheets node is failing, right? And what was the error? the service is receiving too many requests. So this code ran, it sent 12 different pings to Google Sheets saying, add a row, add a row. It was too many. And Google Sheets said, whoa, 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 you're sending me too much data. And it created a problem. So I need to fix this. So if you go to your executions and you see that things are failing, it can help you find and identify where the problem is so you can go in and fix it. So in this case, I might want to add a loop and basically say, send one item, wait 10 seconds, send, a, send another item, wait 10 seconds, keep doing that until you're out of items. And that would slow down the pace, the API calls we're making to Google Sheets. And that would probably fix this problem. Also in this open AI node, I'm saying of all the news stories, pull out 12 that are really great. Well, maybe 12 is too many. Maybe I should reduce that to eight. Maybe if I send only eight, it's not going to cause an error for Google Sheets. Or maybe Google Sheets is failing because there's duplication and there's a link from yesterday that got added again today and it sees that it's a duplicate. I'm not sure. I'd have to look into it. But my point is it's very helpful to check your executions to find and diagnose these issues. All right, and this is just a quick reminder. N8N, it's sort of positioned as like a no code solution, but I'll, I'll be honest with you, if you're not a developer and you start to find these problems, it can be really frustrating and overwhelming to say, I know something's wrong. I can see where it's wrong. I have no idea where to go to start to fix this. So that's part of why we're building the Skillet AI site. We're trying to empower people and teach and educate. So I'd love to hear from you. If you've found any of our content on LinkedIn, if you're on our website, if you want to email our team, it's team at skilletai.com. Let us know where you're getting stuck. Let us know how we can help you. The other thing I want to point out is here on our site, if you're in any of these projects, there's actually an opportunity to book a call with us. What's the point of this call? It's to learn from you guys. It's to find out where you're stuck, where you're struggling, what ideas you have. If you need help, we're available to help you. All right, so hopefully for all the beginners out there, this is a helpful lesson on how to import, in particular, how to import the files from our tutorials. Uh, if you want, you can export, you can publish your own. And then how do you turn on an automation so that it's actually running actively? And then when it's running, how do you check and see, did it run correctly? Did something go wrong? You know, what's happening? All right, so that's it for this lesson. Looking forward to hearing from some of you and can't wait to see what everyone's building. Have a great day, cheers.